Hey guys, it's Ornlu, and man has it been a hot minute since we've gotten to visit the old campaign tier list. As this is one of my most popular series, and since campaigns continue to arrive in AoE 2 DE fairly regularly, I thought I'd make a couple of changes going forward. First, and most simply, instead of doing 40 to 55 minute videos where I cover three campaigns, the episodes for the Mountain Royals are going to cover only one campaign each, and should be maybe 15-ish minutes or so long, the first of which will be arriving on Christmas Day, also known as Monday. When I started this series, I didn't want to bog myself down with a ton of videos if they weren't very popular, but since they are, I think it'll just be easier for me and make things easier for you guys to view if the episodes are shorter and more focused. It should also give me a bit more wiggle room to cover each campaign as well, which is nice. Secondly, as you can probably tell at this point, I am not going to be adding any of the Return of Rome campaigns or original AoE 1 campaigns to the tier list, simply because they don't really feel comparable to AoE 2 as they are basically different games. Lastly, and and most complexly, I'm going to be splitting up a couple of the tiers in the existing tier list. When I originally planned out this series, there were nowhere near as many campaigns as there are now, and since all of the post-DE campaigns have been at least pretty good, the upper echelons of the tier list are getting pretty crowded. Therefore, I'm going to be splitting both S and A tier into two tiers each, and in my infinite creativity, I'm going to be calling them S+, plus, S, A, and A-. minus. So let's see who gets bumped up and down. Starting things with the S tier split, which currently houses nine campaigns with the potential for more to come. That said, I think we can reasonably make a split between the campaigns that are very well done in terms of level design, thematics, and story, versus the ones that have all of those things and stand out as truly iconic. And that's really all the difference, and why I'm not really creating new tiers for these campaigns, but merely splitting the tiers into half steps, if you will. With this in mind, which campaigns are going where? Well, in my opinion, Attila, Barbarossa, and Genghis Khan are all too iconic to Age of Empires 2 to be anywhere other than the top spot. They have great stories, memorable scenarios, and are almost always among the top responses to which campaigns people consider their favorite. Beyond that, the newer Lord Basti campaigns of Yadviga and Rajendra both hold up to basically every single angle in which I can critique campaigns, so I can comfortably drop them into the S plus tier as well. This leaves the Otfis, Kotion Khan, Tamerlane, and the Grand Dukes staying in the S tier. It's tough, but with all of these campaigns being so solid in story and gameplay, there is just a little something that is missing in making them truly iconic. The Otfis have great level design, but are, have a rather murky narrative following a bunch of different people. It also doesn't help that it's the Sicilians campaign, which are not exactly a popular sieve. For Kotian, as much as I think the gameplay progression is really interesting, where you actually get weaker as you play the campaign, I feel like Kotian himself is not really a central enough figure, nor is any single scenario truly Really memorable in the iconic sense. Meanwhile, Tamerlane would be in the S plus tier if it was a four scenario campaign, but alas, the fourth and sixth missions are far too easy and bland, which does drag our Tartar Warlord down a bit. Finally, the Grand Dukes are pretty refreshing with their thematics of the conniving Burgundian princes taking down the righteous Joan of Arc, but again, I can't really say that any one of the missions stands out among all of the others we have in AoE 2 DE. So that's the split of S tier. We have five campaigns that are absolutely fan favorites, and four that are really solid and deserving of a very high rating, but don't quite have those memorable moments of the S plus entries. Now, moving on to A tier. I made the decision to go with an A as the default, and then half a step lower with A minus. In retrospect, I gave high ratings to campaigns that are very solid, but some of them do have noticeable issues that would bring them closer to B tier than S tier, and that's really the big difference between them. With that in mind, I see Saladin, Vlad Dracula, Algirius and Kestutis, and Jan Zizka, all as deserving of their regular A tier status. I of course talk about them more in depth in their various episodes, but each of these are only one or two small aspects away from being in the S tier. In short, they all have great stories, but also have some clunky scenarios or gameplay aspects scattered throughout. Meanwhile, I will unfortunately be half demoting Bari, Prithviraj, Sunjata, Gajamada, and Devapala all into the A minus tier. I still stand by their general placement, and at the very least consider them to be quite close in quality to the A tier tier picks, but there is just something in each of them that feels rather forgettable. The stories of Bari and Sujata aren't exactly the most memorable, even if they have generally quite strong scenarios. None of them really pop. And with so many campaigns in the game right now, you really do need to have a character or scenario that really hit home. And that's just not found here. Prithviraj runs into the issue where the campaign still feels a bit disjointed and short. Devapala is quite pleasant, but is still far too straightforward and simple to make it any higher, and Gajamata is really hurt by the last scenario being very, uh, not 
good. Still, I want to emphasize that all of these campaigns in the A- tier are still quite good, and would totally recommend them to anybody. It's just, well, these lists are getting quite crowded with campaign entries, and it wouldn't hurt to parse them out a bit more. To close things out, episode 12 of this series will drop on Christmas Day, and that will cover just the Thoros campaign. Tamar and Ismail will come sooner rather than later after that, although with the holidays I can't say exactly when just yet. Also, if you're really looking forward to these videos, remember that you can get early access to all of my YouTube videos by subscribing for $3 a month on Patreon. The link to that is always in the description. With our housekeeping done, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.